Here are five books that will change how you see the world. I've read and taken notes on hundreds of nonfiction books over the last decade. My notes on these books are read by hundreds of thousands of people online and seen by millions of people a month across social media platforms. But of those hundreds, these are the five that I most wish I could read again for the first time because of how much they changed how I see the world. And you can see, I mean, how many <laughs> highlights I have from these. Probably have too many highlights. I'll share what the book is, uh, what I learned from it, how it might impact how you see the world. And I really think that if you pick up any of these, it'll have a profound impact on you. So first up, Godel Escher Bach. GEV, as it's called, is a Pulitzer Prize winning book that explores the parallels between math, art, and music. The author was one of the forefathers of computer science, and he wrote the book partially to try to understand how our brains work to help him program computers better. The format of the book is incredible. It's full of illustrations and art. The start of each chapter is like a little story to introduce the concept before he gets into the more technical concepts. And even though there is like some math and logic that you have to put up with uh, throughout it, he never makes it too technical to understand. You can still follow it. And I'll be honest, this is the most challenging book on this list, but it is well worth it. It will really leave you thinking about the nature of intelligence, creativity, and the limits of how well we can understand our own minds. And reading it was so magical because of how he weaves all these different aspects of life together, the variation in the storytelling, and there's a really special payoff at the end that's worth getting through the book for. Okay, up next we have Anti-Fragile. And by the way, if you enjoy these kinds of videos, definitely subscribe. I'm doing a lot more of them now. But Anti-Fragile, Things That Gain From Disorder by Nassim Taleb. Anti-Fragile explores the concept of anti-fragility, which Taleb describes as things that benefit from unexpected changes, interruptions, even minor harms. An anti-fragile system gets stronger the more it's exposed to stresses. A good example is how your body gets stronger when you expose it to exercise, or it gets better at handling heat the more you stress it in the sauna. But he doesn't just talk about biology. The book spans finance, economics, philosophy, psychology, entrepreneurship. He applies the idea in a ton of different fields. And it's one of those books that's kind of magical because once you read it, you have this new phrase to think about the world through, this new lens of things that are anti anti-fragile, fragile, robust. And it really makes you rethink things that maybe you thought were risky, but actually aren't risky. They're actually safer than the things that you thought were safe all along. I will say the one aspect of the book that can alienate some people is how strong his language is. He can be kind of snarky, condescending, uh, rude. <laughs> but if you can get through that and maybe kind of like lean into it, try to enjoy it, I find it entertaining at times, then you'll definitely gain a new perspective on life after reading this book. Okay. Up next, you almost certainly heard of this one, but I couldn't not include it. It's Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. Letters is a collection of 124 letters written from uh, Seneca to his friend, pupil, possibly lover, unknown, uh, Lucilius. At its core, Seneca is representing the philosophy of Stoicism, and he's arguing that the fulfillment of life is living in accordance with your nature, trying to be the best version of yourself while also accepting the many things that you can't change or can't control. It's one of, if not the most popular philosophy book in the world, and for good reason. Stoicism is so much easier to read than almost any other kind of moral or ethical philosophy. It's extremely tactical, and honestly, it reads like it could have been written a few months ago on Twitter threads or something. It also provided one of the first really compelling arguments I heard for living a more disciplined life. He really digs into this idea of being the best version of yourself, but not in a horny, overly self-helpy way. Uh, it also provides some incredible remedies for common thought patterns that we get stuck in. It's had a profound impact on so many people, not just me, so it's definitely worth giving a read. Fourth, uh, this is the most recent one by a decent margin, which is uh, 4,000 Weeks, Time Management for Mortals. I normally wouldn't put a productivity book on this kind of list, but this one's special. This book explores the limits of time management and productivity and tries to provide a more, really a happier outlook towards life than just maximizing your output. And he offers a lot of practical tips to do this. It's not purely just an argument or philosophy. He actually helps you uh, try to rethink work in a way that will hopefully be healthier for you long term. I'll read you one line from the book that I particularly liked. Once time is a resource to be used, you start to feel pressure whether from external forces or from yourself, to use it well and to berate yourself when you feel you've wasted it. And one concept that uh, a lot of people haven't thought about, I hadn't thought about a ton before reading this book and another one called Metaphors We Live By, is this idea that time is a resource to be spent is really just one concept of time and actually a fairly modern one and not necessarily the only way to look at your time. So. Uh, this book will definitely really make you rethink your relationship to work. 
And then last, a book that will uh, make you rethink everything. Uh, one of my favorites and the shortest on this list is Finite and Infinite Games. This book explores the two ways that we can approach life as a finite game or an infinite game. As Carr describes in the book, a finite game is played for the purpose of winning. An infinite game is played to continue the play. Finite game could be something like a baseball game, a chess match, a war, anything specifically confined like that. Whereas infinite games are things like education, love, fun, learning. And the big infinite game is life itself. In the book, Kars argues that infinite games are more fulfilling over the long term. If we uh, embroil ourselves in finite games, then we're always trying to win at somebody else's expense. But if we can step back and focus on the bigger, more important infinite games of life, then we can actually live uh, a happier, more fulfilling existence. In infinite games, there are no winners and losers, so there is no need for competition. You're genuinely uh, trying to enjoy the game as much as possible and hoping other people can enjoy it as much as possible too. There's also so much more than that. Uh, you can. This is probably the most dense highlighted uh, book on the list. Uh, I, I love this one so much. I've reread it half a dozen times probably. Uh, but those are the five books. Okay, so do a quick recap here. Uh, we have Godel Escherbach, An Eternal Golden Braid. Have Anti-Fragile, Things That Gain From Disorder. We have Letters From a Stoic. And we have 4,000 Weeks. And then of course, Find out infinite games. Thank you so much for watching this. And if you want to learn more about anti-fragile in particular, check out my video about it up above.